on this episode of South Hawk Computing. Is your router giving you issues and you're ready to throw it out the window? You might want to hold off before you start to open up your wallet here. There's a couple of free alternatives that you might want to check out and that's coming up next. Warning. The following video is performed by a trained professional. It is meant for educational purposes only. Please do not attempt to try anything you see here. Enjoy. Hey YouTube, Dan from South Hawk Computing here and we're going to tackle third-party firmwares for home consumer routers. Now before I even start into any of this, like I give that disclaimer at every single video that I post out there, I'm going to say it again. You should always do this with a trained professional. You run a very good risk of bricking your router or quote unquote making it non-functional if you don't follow the directions absolutely to the point. So that being said, here we have an Asus WL500W. It's not the fastest router out there. Matter of fact, it's a couple of years old as it is. Its uh, processor is clocked at 264 megahertz. Again, not the fastest, but before you go shelling out more money, would it be nice to see if you could actually make your current setup or current older router a lot faster or a lot more stable as far as your networking environment. A lot of these old guys have issues when, you know, you have your computer and now your TVs and your Apple TVs and your cell phones and everything else. Basically, the, the stock firmware can't handle all that stuff. So... What we're going to put on here today is we're going to do uh, two different um, third-party firmwares, DDWRT and Tomato. My rule of thumb is whenever I'm trying these third-party firmwares, I usually do the DDWRT first. Then, if I want to install Tomato, I immediately install it after that. I've always had the greater success of installing DDWRT first without bricking the actual router and then following it up with a tomato install. So what we're going to do here is we're going to follow the directions straight off the DDWRT website. It's going to take a while and uh, we'll do screen captures and all that fun stuff and then we'll go from there. Another thing to note with these third-party firmwares, they actually have a lot more advanced features that are commonly found in uh, high-end slash business routers and matter of fact a lot of these super fast routers out there for the consumers will have these features so it's another thing to try if you have nothing to lose and you don't care if you actually brick the router by accident then I would say go for it but as I stated before you should always have somebody who's done this before guiding you through it because it's not necessarily the most easiest thing to do okay so now we have to do a 30-30-30 Basically, it's holding the reset, or in this case, the restore button on the back for 30 seconds while the router's on. Then unplugging the power for the router while still holding the reset for another 30 seconds. And then plugging it back in one more time, still holding that restore slash reset button. And uh, yeah, so here we go. Just did our 3030. Uh, right now it should be in its restore mode and it is definitely in its restore mode if we can see here that the power light is blinking so we're good with that. So next according to these directions here we're going to do the clear NVRAM and we're going to use the uh, TFTP client to do that. So we'll be right back.
Okay, we're gonna wait the three minutes. Reboot. Thirty, thirty, thirty. Okay, and it says a reboot.
Okay, there you have it. It was one heck of a process, but uh, there you go. Tomato is on there, as well as uh, prior to that, we had DDWRT. And I hope this helps you guys out. Um, this is, you know, one of those worst case scenarios as far as upgrading to a third party uh, firmware. But as you can see, the all the additional features, especially QoS uh, quality of service to help control what's going on your desktop, or I should say on all your wireless or uh, desktop devices. Uh, you could obviously um, take control of your network on an older router, which is great. Um, that I can't speak highly enough of both of these firmwares. They've uh, never let me down. Um, it's just, uh, again, you have to be extremely careful when it comes to doing these uh, firmwares because bricking any router is extremely easy to do. All right, this is Dan from South Pollock Computing. If you haven't already, like this video, subscribe to the channel, like the Facebook page too. We're also doing a laptop giveaway this uh, for the spring. Uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and go to the forums, register, sign up, and uh, enter to win uh, yourself a free laptop. This is Dan from South Pollock Computing. Until the next time.